Good evening and Merry Christmas. My name is Justin LaRosa and I serve as the Minister of the Portico. 2020 has been really strange, hasn't it? Who would have guessed this time last year that we'd be worshiping together like this? Yet, here we are. And I'm here outside at the Portico, our downtown location, standing behind our homeless Jesus sculpture that was installed in 2015. Here's an interesting fact. This right here is only one of 92 sculptures all across the world. The artist only allows one per city. He wants it to be placed in a way that the public can engage it and encounter it. This same three-dimensional broad sculpture has been installed all over Europe, Australia, Canada, Jerusalem, Vatican City, and all over the US. Here's one of its powerful messages. We often experience God in places and in people when we least expect it. God can meet you right here tonight, online as we worship together in this different way. Welcome to Hyde Park United Methodist Christmas Eve service online. Hyde Park is committed to our mission, which is to make God's love real by teaching people to follow Jesus by loving God and loving all. We take the thoughts that we have about God and make them real out in the world. So no matter where you are, whether you're new to church, a longtime follower of Jesus, or aren't sure about what you believe, 
there's a place here for you to explore, belong, and grow. We want to help you follow Jesus. If you're on the website or Facebook, say hello in the chat or comment section. And if you're comfortable, let us know you're here. And you can do that two ways. Click the connect button or tap the registration link on Facebook. One easy way to share the good news of Jesus this Christmas is to share this service with your friends and your family and your neighbors. And you can do that by starting a watch party on Facebook or clicking the invite button on the website. Through this very, very simple act, God may change somebody's life. Meet Judith, who joins us weekly from a thousand miles away. She lives in Ohio and started watching online. She's never walked on to either one of our campuses at Hyde Park or here at the Portico. But what she discovered through our online ministry was a relationship with God in the church. And she did it by being invited by her niece. Let's meet Judith. I live uh, northwest of Dayton, Ohio, on a 40-acre farm. My niece, Felicia, and her husband, Scott, are members of Hyde Park. And when the pandemic first began in March, they asked several of us to join them. And she sent the link and I clicked on it and I began joining them on occasion for those um, services. Sometimes I'll hear a devotion and it resonates with me or a younger me. And I will reach out to that staff person or pastor. And the devotions Monday through Friday were certainly a, a great way to find new pathways to learn and to experience God. Um, I learned to meditate. So Hyde Park, in, with the sermons on Sunday, um, became great ways to expand my spiritual knowledge and uh, to feel comfort and reassurance. That's the power of Hyde Park and technology because I'm a thousand and four miles away and yet you touched and embraced us with God's love. What a beautiful story. Thank you so much, Judith, for sharing it. This may not have happened had it not been for her niece who invited her. Perhaps you know somebody who needs to hear a message of hope, a message of love, something going on in their life where God could meet them right here and now. You could invite them to our church. It's online ministries in the service tonight because the Christmas is all about sharing, about reaching people right where they are. Not needing to have it all together, having to have the perfect life, but discovering the love that's made real in Jesus the Christ. Once again, we wanna welcome you to our worship service as we celebrate the birth of Jesus the Christ.
This is the night. This is the night our hearts burst open with joy. This is the evening that grace pours out of heaven. And this is the moment when Christ comes to make all things new. Friends, will you please join me in a prayerful lighting of the Advent candles. Oh God, you are the light of hope. You have given hope to all who cry. For in you, we discover that sorrow and grief are never the last word. Through Christ, you have conquered death itself so we might live in your eternal embrace. Oh God, you are the light of peace. You have helped us find our way again for in you we find freedom from division and from all the barriers that separate us from each other and even from you. Through Christ, you have made us one people, your children into one family. Oh God, you are the light of joy. You have given our weary and struggling world reason to rejoice. For in you, we find a release from our fears our worries, and our anxieties. Through Christ, you offer us life more abundant and a joy that is our strength. Oh God, you are the light of love. So we join the angels and the shepherds praising you for the love you pour out on the world. For in you, our hearts can be transformed and turned outward in service to you and others rather than inward upon ourselves. Through Christ, you show us the greatest demonstration of love as he gave his life for us. And so on this most holy of nights, we celebrate the light of Christ. For even though you look like a fragile, powerless newborn, we recognize you as the ruler of the universe. Yes, Jesus has come to break into the darkness of our world, which the darkness can never overcome. Tonight we arise for your light has come. Glory to you, Lord of the universe and hope of the world. In the name of Christ, we pray, who taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Hi, I'm Vicki Walker, Minister of Missions and Outreach. One of our Christmas traditions is collecting an offering that goes to the Sparrow Fund. Through the Sparrow Fund, we're able to support church and community members through our partnership with Metropolitan Ministries. This year alone, we've helped stabilize over 400 families who are going through unexpected trauma and economic impacts from the COVID-19. I know that you'll want to help us as we move into 2021 and as more families are needing our support. So I hope you'll join us. Take a look at hydeparkumc.org slash sparrow, and you can give today to help make God's love real to families who are hurting. And now let's hear the word of God from the St. Luke chapter two, verses one through 20. Now, my favorite version was Linus's in the King James version, but I'll be reading from the new revised standard version Some of you will recognize this Bible. We've been going through the Bible through the whole year together. Day 269, if you want to read along with me. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. 
For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of God for the world. Thanks be to God.
Among the many symbols of the Christmas season, perhaps the one we cherish the most tonight is the candle. For centuries, people have gathered together on Christmas Eve to pass the light from a single candle until everyone is lifting candlelight to the sky as a defiant witness against the darkness. There's always something about lighting a candle that evokes emotion. Think about the times we most often light candles, when we celebrate a birthday, when we set a romantic mood, when we scramble after the power goes out, when a couple gets married, when we remember a loved one who has died. Candles evoke emotion. They overcome darkness. They symbolize hope. Perhaps more than any other year in our lifetimes, a candle is a perfect symbol for Christmas Eve. I hope at some point tonight that you will light a candle, just like I will in a few moments. And when you do, think about something. Recognize that the fire that you hold in your hand is only possible through the perfect balance between wick and wax. I mean, that's what a candle is, after all. It is two polar opposites working in harmony to produce a light that lasts. Because if, if all you had was wax, then you'd have no fire. And if all you had was wick, then the fire that you do have would quickly go out. To fully counter the darkness, you need both. Two opposites coexisting in one place. In other words, just like the incarnation, which is at the heart of Christmas. As it turns out, a candle is a pretty good symbol for Christmas because it is a pretty good metaphor for the one we celebrate at Christmas. When Jesus was born, John's gospel says that he was the light, a light in whom life was possible for all people. And like every candle, Jesus was the perfect fusion of two polar opposites to be an enduring light for all creation. He was fully divine and fully human. He was wick and he was wax. Because he was fully God, everything he said and did was filled with the spark and passion of the creator of the universe and the Lord of all creation. He could, he could heal the sick and, and temper the storm. He spoke truth to power and he offered hope for the downtrodden. But he was also fully human. He breathed real air. He craved real food. He experienced real sadness and, and suffered real pain. His compassion for the hurting wrenched him in his gut and he wept real tears of grief. The history of Christian theology makes it clear. He was not 50% God and 50% and human. He was not just God on the inside and, 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 and human on the outside. He, he wasn't just God with skin on, nor was he just a human who thought he was God. Uh, on a purely rational and logical level, it doesn't make total sense. But he was 100% God and 100% human. Two opposites fused together in perfect harmony. And that's why he is the light. The only one who, as, as John said, could overcome the darkness against whom the darkness doesn't have a chance. I think, I think it's what makes a candle a pretty good symbol for Christmas. But there's one other thing worth thinking about tonight, something worth pondering. One of the most overlooked parts of Luke's Christmas story happens in chapter 2, verse 19. After Mary and Joseph had settled into their stable after a long, weary journey, after the angels had lit up the sky and filled it with song, after the shepherds and their sheep arrived at the manger, after all the noise and excitement and energy of Luke 2, 1 to 18, we get to verse 19. Luke decides to pan the camera and zoom in on Mary, and we get a privileged look into what she was thinking and into what she was feeling in that moment. Luke says, quote, and Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. 
She pondered. You may not have thought of that word as, as an important one for Christmas, but after tonight, I hope you will. Luke is the only New Testament writer to use that word. He uses it a handful of times in Luke and Acts, and this is the only time where that word is translated as ponder. Now, why is that interesting? Well, in the Greek, that word for ponder means, are you ready for this? The fusion of two polar opposites. Luke uses that word in chapter 14 to describe two warring kings who come together. Each time he uses that word in the book of Acts, it's used to describe two people engaging each other with different ideas. For Luke, pondering meant allowing God to bring together two seemingly opposite ideas in one moment and making them into one. And as Mary surveyed the scene in that stable, did she ever have a lot to ponder? When she saw those shepherds, maybe she pondered how such a bunch of ordinary outcasts could be summoned by angels and given a mission from God. When she looked at her husband, Joseph, maybe she pondered how a man of such integrity and discipline could be willing to take such a risk and give of himself in service to her. When she looked at herself, Maybe she pondered how in the world she, the most obscure and unsuspecting of women, could be chosen by God to bear such a gift to the world. And when she looked at this baby in her arms, maybe she pondered how this little bundle could be both fully human and fully divine. That manger on that very first Christmas was full of contradictions. It was a, a panoply of paradoxes. <laughs> and that was just the way God wanted it. Because God takes ordinary people and does extraordinary things in them and through them. And that is just what God wants to do for you tonight. Tonight, I hope you will light a candle. In fact, join me in a few moments when I light mine. And as you are holding that light in your hand, I invite you to ponder what it represents. That you, ordinary old you, are called by God to carry an extraordinary light. That, that all of the grief and fear and sorrow that you are carrying can actually become a vessel to hold the grace of God. That, that this year, as, as miserable as it has been, can actually be illumined by a single light of hope. And how you, with all that you have struggled with until now, how you can have a new beginning right now. God is calling you to be a candle in the hand of the Most High. Your wick set aflame by the power of God, your life strengthened with endurance by the grace of God so that the love of God shining through you can make a difference in the world and can be as defiant a witness against the darkness as a candle lifted to the sky. Merry Christmas, friends. May you choose this day and every day to come to make it a living Christmas by the light of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Oh God, tonight we receive from you the light which darkness cannot overcome, the light in whom we find life, the light of the world, Jesus Christ. We offer to you our open hearts to shine that light and our open hands to share that light with the world. By your power and in your grace, May you use us as light to the world in the name of Jesus Christ, our newborn King, and let all God's people say, Amen. We join now with Christians around the world and throughout time in the lighting of candles on Christmas Eve.
In a moment, we will join together in the singing of Silent Night as I light from the Christ candle of our Advent wreath. If you have a candle with you, you can light it as you share its light with those who are with you. And then we will conclude our service with the singing of joy to the world. And during that last verse, we will raise our candles as beacons of light to the world. Let us share in the light of Christmas.
The light that we carry into the world is not in our hands, but in our hearts. Let us go from this place to be the light of Christ and help to bring joy to the world. Tonight, we have seen the glory of God, a light that shines, which the darkness shall not overcome. May the love of our creator, the joy of the spirit and the peace of the Christ child be with you this Christmas and evermore. Amen. I hope God touched your heart and soul tonight. And I hope there was something else that happened too. I hope there was a spark, a spark of desire to love God and to love others more. In January at Hyde Park, you can do that in a number of ways. Worship with us on Sundays at 9.30 or 11 online, or you can join us in person by RSVP at 9.30. Perhaps you're looking for another way to connect, small groups. We have a bunch of them starting in January. And what you'll find there is a welcoming, open-minded community where you can explore, you can wrestle with your beliefs, and you can engage in spiritual practices. You see, that's what following Jesus is all about. We learn about Jesus, we believe in him, and we follow him by making God's love real. Let's do it together in 2021. I hope to see you then.